2 Corinthians chapter 1 Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God. Now we talked about the apostleship. There are three classifications to be apostle that can't be today. Number one, you had to been baptized of John's baptism. Number two, you had to see Jesus in his earthly ministry. Three, you had to see the resurrected Jesus Christ from the empty tomb. Apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. There's God setting Paul off. He was baptized. He saw Jesus and then he saw Jesus. And it was a will of God for Paul to be an apostle. So not, the, not everybody has the same will of God in their life. I can never say the will of God in my life is to be an apostle. I'd be a liar. You can't say that. And Timothy, and Timothy I'm so interested in saying Timothy, Timothy, our brother. So apparently Timothy is with Paul as he's writing this letter. He's like, uh, Paul, you know, what are you doing? Well, I'm going to write the Corinth church. Tell him I say hello. Our brother unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, and all the saints which are in all Achilia. This is a division area around Corinth and all that. This letter, this letter is not going just to the Corinth Corinthians. It's going all around. Like, am I a citizen of Corinth today? No, but guess what do I have? I have the book of Corinthians. Have I ever been to Rome? Nope, but I have the book of Rome. Romans. So this is the second letter. It's probably written by 60 AD, and they say from Philippi. Uh, this would take accounts of Acts 19.23 to 21-3. That's what they say. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. So he's opened up his letter of who God is. God is grace. God is peace. That's the fruit of the Spirit. God is our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Together, one. And yet, that Trinity thing, we can't explain. Because, uh, excuse me, be, yeah. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God. There's the title. The Father, God, the Son, Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. Well, that's kind of interesting. Because when Jesus said, I'm going to go away to the Father, I'm going to give you something. What was that promise that Jesus said he would give us? Comforter. So with that scripture and what we're reading right now, guess what the Holy Ghost is? The Holy Spirit. He's God. And I remember when Peter had a little argument with a couple, with a husband and wife in the book of Acts. and said, you've lied to the Holy Spirit. And then when the wife comes along, he says, you've lied to God. This is scripture telling us that that Holy Spirit is God. And God is the Holy Spirit. And later on, Paul's going to tell us that there's another spirit. Um, is it John? That says, try the spirits. you got to be careful when you get in the spirit realm. There's one Holy Spirit and there's one wicked spirit that manifests itself many ways. But here is God, the comforter, all comfort. You want comfort? You get it from God. You ain't get it from a bottle. You don't get it from smoking it. You don't get it from, from eating it. You get it from God. Man won't give you comfort. Who comforts us in all our tribulation. Now this is, this part of these things are not really happy. But in tribulation, in troubles. And we as a family, we go we go through problems with people giving us because of the ministry we have. And we walk to the car and we talk about the good times we had serving the Lord. There's been one time, I think we made the 32nd mall appearance and we're kicked out. Well, amen. Glory to God. They don't know what that we might that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. So now listen, listen. 
Listen. Are you having tribulation in your life as a Christian? All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Are you getting tribulation? All right, Paul just said, comfort them which are in trouble. As you have been comforted by God, people who are in trouble, Paul is telling you, you go comfort them. You go help them out. You go encourage them. You help them to take comfort in God. We all help each other. What you've learned, help others. Because there's nothing more for a Christian to have troubles. And here comes a Christian that's had troubles and goes up to him, takes him under the arms. And, yeah, you went through something like that. That person knows something. By the comfort, 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 where we ourselves are comforted by God. So look at you're in there with a sandwich by God. God is doing the comforting. You ought to be doing the comforting. And there is God doing the comfort over. You helping God and God helping you for Christians who are in tribulation, who are in uh, troubles and problems. We're to help all. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation, that's comfort from misery, Consolation, comfort of misery, shall also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for our consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same suffering which we also suffer, but whether we be comforted or it is to your consolation and salvation. I'm suffering is to help you in your salvation and to help you when you're suffering. And when you're in tribulation, that's to help affirm to me that, you know what, we're Christians, we're bound together, we're, we're to comfort each other. God is comforted. It could be a whole lot worse. And we see Christians suffering and have troubles and like that. And it's so hard to think about that when you've got your own troubles. I'm going through troubles now. I just had a big letdown today. and It's just mind boggling. But only in the Lord do I have comfort and rest. In man, I don't, I don't trust him. I got to rely on God in the troubles I'm having right now. And only God can do something. And I got another brother who in the Lord's got the same problem I have. And we're right now we're just comforting each other. And no one else can come in. Somebody can't come in who doesn't have the two problems that we have. Oh, I know what you feel. No, you don't know what I feel. Now, we may be at odds at other things, but we're still brothers in the Lord. When it comes down to the this, this circumstances of medical needs that we have together, we can join together like that and pray for each other. He's suffering and I'm suffering. And our hope of you is steadfast. Sure, bound, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also of the consolation, the comfort of misery. Now, do you see why Christians will not serve? You walk up to someone, you receive Christ Jesus as your Savior. Let me tell you something. Now that you do that, you're going to suffer, you're going to have tribulation, you're going to have troubles, and you're going to have pro problems more than your average person. You think they're going to huck on? You think they're going to lock on? You think they're going to jump on that wagon? And yet there are people out there who reverse the message. That, oh, if you get saved, everything will be hunky-dory. Everything will be wonderful. We just heard the other day that they had a faith, uh, a faith healer in the prisons. Really? And the joke was, well, how come everybody got to stay in prison and that guy got to go home? If you healed everything, all those, those jail cells should have been open. They would have been relieved of their crimes. And wouldn't it be a great healing to have a, a man in jail be healed of their crimes and never want to do it again? And they'll sit out in, out in the public and do honest, lawful, abiding citizens. Wouldn't that be a healing? That would be a great mental status of a person that you could heal him to the fact that he's never going to break the law again. That's a, isn't that a healing? You're phonies out there. For we would not, brethren, brethren, say people, have you ignorant 
We don't want you to unknown for our trouble, which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above strength, insomuch that we dis we despaired even of life. You know what Paul just said there as a Christian? God loves me, people. God is love. God won't hurt you. God will give you a million dollars you get. You know what Paul just said there? We had so much trouble and anguish. Man, we didn't even think we were going to live it. We were so pressed. Out of measure. Now, don't you come to me as a Christian and me as a Christian and say, Stolly, the trouble, you know, you shouldn't be thinking about giving up. You shouldn't be thinking some of the things you think. Paul was. Paul tells one of the churches, I'd rather be absent from the body of the Lord right now, but it's need for me, for me to be here, but I'd rather go home to glory right now. <laughs> Getting saved does not solve your, your troubles and your problems. You'll probably get more. And I need to learn that. And I'll get you in the prayer line to the Lord more. And it's not for you, for somebody. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves. This is Paul speaking. That we should not trust in ourselves. There's, don't get yourself away from yourself. Get yourself away from your flesh. But in God which raises the dead. All right. If we would have died. Well. Absent from the body. Present with the Lord. The worst they can do is kill us. And they didn't win. If somebody were to kill you, let's just say for instance, I'm not going to, you know, I'm, I want to die for Christ. No, I want to be a living example for Christ. God can't use dead saints. But let's say you're a Christian, you're doing something for the Lord, and they come up and they kill you. What worse have they done? A, you have no more pain. You have no more cares. B, you are now with Jesus Christ. See, you're going to get an extra crown that many will not get in this church age. D, they'll be charged with murder if they don't repent and get right. And E, if they don't repent and get right, they're going to be cast off into hell by rejecting the Savior that met you the day they killed you. But rest assured, Christian, I don't mean rest assured, but I'm saying rest assured. If you want to live right for God, you will get persecution. I don't know what it will be. I don't know how hard it will be, but you will get it. If you don't get it, you're not living right. If your city and town and all that love you, respect you, you're not doing a Christian walk. That's just what the Bible says. Who deliver us from so great a death and doth deliver. See, he delivered past death and he is delivering doth in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us future look at that. past present and future reliance on god what he's done before what he's doing now and what he will do later you know what gets you through your trials and tribulations today and i have a problem with my own trials and tribulations if we forget to look back and say look what god did to us before I write in my Bible dates of prayers, Lord, for my foot, Lord, for my ear infection, Lord, for my wife in the hospital, and all the hospitals, all the things, Lord, the car's doing this, Lord, we got this bill. And I write those things in the Bible. I go through it like, wow, three years ago, the Lord did, I forgot all about that. Wow, if he could take care of that three years ago, I guarantee he can take care of what today's troubles are. You need to write in your Bibles, you need to date in your Bibles, people's names for prayers, and what God is doing for you. Count your many blessings and read them one by one. I got one here right now, 8501, for another child. And it was answered. My daughter, Rachel. Uh... I got one here for my toe to remain, for my toe right now to remain uh, uh, no infection anymore. Right now that prayer is going because there could be an infection. Uh, I got another prayer here, 9703, for another child. That prayer led, led to the, the, the cancer results that my wife needed to know. 
I got another prayer here. Two nine ten. The city of Newark wants us to stop the church and see these things. The Lord got me through those things. I read those things. They're beauty. They're dated. Lord, you are faithful. I got another one here. Six three eleven. Tracy Lee's test come back all negative. I don't even know what the test was, but amen right by that. I know he's gonna do it. I know he can do it. That's past, present, future. I'm going to read this again. Who delivered us from so great a death, does deliver, and who we trust that he will yet deliver us. you got to remember that. I'm going to put that on every bill we get, every time we go up in the hospital. Every, every, it, ought to, it ought to be a memory verse. Yet also helping together by prayer for us. Prayer helps. Did you get that? You better be praying for people who are in tribulation. That for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. Lord God, will you help Paul? We just man, he's in terrible trouble in Asia. Hey, boy, have we got we got the letter to Corinthians. Paul's okay. Hey, Amen. Thank you, Lord. Think of all the people. Thank you, Lord. He's okay. He's on his way. See when when you pray for others in problems, and you you well, you know they came out of the hospital, they're okay. And all these, then you can thank the Lord and you can you know praise in their victory. It's a wonderful thing, prayer. For you see, he also helping together. Well, I can't give money. I I, I can't go visit him. I I can't give him a dinner. I don't know what to get to him. Help by prayer. That's the best thing you can do. For our rejoicing is this. The testimony of our conscience that in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshy wisdom, but by the grace of God, we have had our conversation in the world more abundantly to you word. To you word. You word. Our testimony is godly. It's simple. It's right. It's not fleshy. It's not worldly. But you know what? It's abounding. Our life you know, a lot of, in the book of Acts, you know, a lot of times when they were persecuted, the church grew. You want a revival in America? You don't want a revival in America. Because I'll tell you what, what will bring a revival in America. Baptist preachers being locked up in jail for the word of God. Your house being confiscated. You being taxed to drive to your church. That's what brought the, the revivals when the church is being persecuted. I think the church is too wimpy today to be persecuted. Because Jesus is standing outside the door knocking and anybody will come out. For we write none other things unto you than what ye read or acknowledge, and I trust ye shall acknowledge even to the end. As also ye have knowledge in us in part that we are your rejoicing, even as ye also are ours in the day of the Lord Jesus. When that Lord Jesus comes, that will be a rejoicing time. Now, I don't know. At the rapture, I don't know. I don't know if we're going to recognize each other. And if we do, think about that day when you see your loved ones there in the clouds before we see you. If you can recognize them. And if not, if we don't recognize each other, this knows that everybody there in the clouds is result because everyone that was in the clouds. You know what I'm saying? Everyone is saved has been saved by someone who's been saved. Who's witness. They're there because someone got saved by Jesus Christ. So it would be one great unit. Unless somebody's never witnessed. But even they had somebody come witness to them. And... In this confidence, I was minded to come unto you before that ye might have a second benefit. So Paul's still looking to come to Corinth. And to pass by you into Macedonia, and to come again out of Macedonia unto you. And of you to be brought on my way toward Judea. So he wants to go to Judea, he wants to pass to the Corinthians, he wants to visit them. He has a desire to be there. When I therefore was thus minded, did I use my likeness or the things that I purposed? 
Do I purpose according to the flesh? That with me there should be yea, yea, and nay, nay. But as God is true, our word toward you was not yea and nay. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, even by me and Silvanus and Timothy. So Timothy, Timothy, he's preached to Corinthians. Remember we read in the last chapter of 1 Corinthians. If Timothy comes, let him not be fearing you, but listen to him. So Timothy's been there. He's been preaching to him. And what did they preach? God, Christ, Jesus. That's what they preach. Yay, nay. It was simple words. Not negative. No. Not affirmative. Yes. Simple words. For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God. By What's the promises of God? One day he's calling us out of here. One day we're going to get a new body, new Jerusalem. If we're saved, we'll be sealed. We'll never ever get unsealed. Those are promises. That's a yay. That's an amen. Now he which established us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God. Anointed. You know what Christ means? Christ means anointed. So he's established, puts you into be in Christ Jesus and has anointed us. That's God. Your salvation is of God. His blood, Acts 20, 28, paid for your soul. Who has also sealed us. And the greatest illustration I've been told like that, you picture your name has been put into an envelope. And God licks that thing, seals that envelope. And he puts that wax there, like they used to do in the old days, and he signifies with his ring. And he takes that envelope. No one ever can break that seal. You are forever in the envelope of God. Satan can't touch you. Uh, death can't touch you. What, all the things that the, the principality, Paul says, all these things, I know, not going to separate from the love of God. You're sealed. That envelope at the rapture, the judgment seat of Christ will be opened by Christ. Remember the seven seal book? No one could open that book but one. The lamb that's slain from the foundation of the world. That, that lamb takes those envelopes. He opens up. He judges us, us, us at the at the judgment seat of Christ. Where they, we're his. There we are. There are his. No one can interfere us with the judgment seat of Christ if we're sealed by God. Save. And then he even says, we'll be tried by fire. Not us, but our works. Who has also sealed us and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our heart. So there's Christ. There's God. There's the Spirit. All in our life. All in one. In us. Moreover, I call God for a record upon my soul. A record. You know, you write something down. I know today with age of computers, they don't you know, know what a record is. You just have a book. You write your money down. You write your stuff down. They kept it bookkeeping. That to spare you, I came not as yet unto Corinth. Not for that we have dominion over our faith, your faith, excuse me, but our helpers of your joy, for by faith ye stand. So Paul wants to go there. He didn't go there. There's much tribulation going on everywhere. Comfort in it. Help others in it. Keep praying. We are still sealed no matter what happens. If I come to you guys, I come to you. If I don't, hey, we'll meet in the air. That's what it is.